The race to 5G is a race America must win, and it's a race, frankly, that our great companies are now involved in. We've given them the incentive they need. It's a race that we will win. Hello, YouTube family. It is Miss Dana Ashley. It is July 22nd, 2019. It's a hot one, but I wanted to quickly jump on here and let you guys know about a very impressive lineup of speakers that is being gathered together for the purpose of creating awareness around the quickly closing in 5G agenda. Verizon's 5G is coming to Boston this year, and today the wireless company announced an additional 20 cities will get the new network in 2019. As wireless companies in the U.S. say they'll have to install about 300,000 new antennas for the rollout of 5G. That is roughly equal to the total number of cell phone towers built over the past three decades. Now, while there have been news outlets that are covering the could be, would be health impacts of these microwave and millimeter frequencies, typically they still end with the science is still out tagline, even though that is absolutely not true. Cities like Sacramento and Los Angeles are already rolling out 5G small cell towers with the anecdotal proof of horrible impacts already rolling in. Sprint shut down a cell phone tower on the campus of a California elementary school after some parents said it may be linked to several recent cases of childhood cancer. Sprint says the tower is safe and has operated well below federal safety limits. Carter Evans spoke to the families at the center of the controversy. My son missed growing up with his friends. It's not something that I wish on anybody to watch their child go through what our children have gone through. Kelly Prime's son Kyle was just 10 years old when he was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 2016. Five months later, Kyle's friend and classmate Mason Ferruli developed brain cancer. He had to learn to walk, talk, eat, everything all over again. Two more kids at the school were diagnosed this year. At what point are you saying, we ought to take a close look at the school here. The moms believe the recent increase in cancer cases could be caused by radiation from radio frequency or RF waves coming from this cell tower located on the elementary school campus. It is classified as a possible carcinogen. That tells us that there is some evidence out there. Let me just ask you flat out. Does Sprint believe that tower could be causing cancer? Absolutely not. Do you believe the oncologists who say cell towers can't cause cancer? I believe that everybody wants to believe our government. Prime son Kyle is in remission, but he still undergoes scans every three months. I've looked into his eyes and I've looked at the fear that he has as a nine-year-old facing something, asking me, Mom, am I going to die? It would push you to fight as well. It would push any parent to fight. I won't stop until it's done, until that thing is gone. Now, when you see stories like this rare coverage on CBS, it's incredibly moving, but many are still left wondering, what can we do about this? How can we do something about this? Well, that is where this information comes in. I was recently invited to be interviewed as a part of a 5G summit. If you see the link in the description, you'll see how to see that. That's going to be coming up later in the summer. But unlike myself, most of these speakers are experts in the field of 5G, and they have a ton of really important information about these impacts for this technology, as well as important advice about how to fight this global 5G agenda, not only politically, but in your own schools, in your own cities, and really importantly, in your own home. Although the summit is officially opening uh, later this summer in August, I wanted to let you guys know right now because they've already released a couple of teaser interviews that contain excellent information and they're available to watch immediately upon signing up for this free online summit. Now, one of the speakers that's available now to watch is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's doing more great work by raising awareness about this 5G issue. People have no idea that this is happening. People, I think, are completely unconscious of it. And I think the industry likes that because nobody's asking questions. You know, if you put all these things in space with no information, without information, you can't have a good descent. And right now, nobody has this information. And they, you know, the people who are putting it up in space admit that they were specifically asked by the Senate have you done any studies to test if this is safe? There is no data that would indicate that it's safe. There's only propaganda, but there is no data. There are no data. And there are 
a lot of studies that indicate it is not safe. Uh, I believe that Americans deserve to know what the health effects are. My question for, for you, particularly Mr. Gillen and Mr. Perry, how much money has the industry committed to supporting additional independent research? Is that independent research ongoing? Has any been completed? Where can consumers look for it? And we're talking about research on the biological effects of this new technology. There are no industry back studies to my knowledge right now. Happy to visit with you as to what uh, opportunities you think there needs to be more studies and we're always for more science. We also rely on what the scientists tell us. There are no industry back studies to my knowledge right now. Happy to visit with you as to what uh, opportunities you think there needs to be more studies and we're always for more science. We also rely on what the scientists tell us. So essentially the answer to my question, how much money? Zero. Uh, I can so far only follow up with you, Senator. To my knowledge, there's no active studies being backed by industry today. Anybody else know of industry commitments to, to back research, fund it, support it, to ascertain scientifically the health effect? No, I'm not aware of any. So there really is no research ongoing. We're kind of flying blind here so far as health and safety is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I have seven kids, and I'm very frightened to think about the world that they're growing up in um, because I think everything that they do is they're never going to be out of sight of some kind of, uh, some kind of surveillance system. Everybody needs to become an activist. Everybody needs to become involved. You can't afford to sit at home anymore and, you know, and pretend this isn't happening because it's real now and the bad guys are winning and we need to take back our democracy. And it, I mean, of course, what I would suggest to people is that they should join Children's Health Defense and, uh, and get involved. As well, one of my favorite people, Patrick Wood, who sees and effortlessly explains the agenda behind 5G. This is something you are never going to see them talking about on the news, which is technocracy. Now, that is key because it is this motive that will lead 5G to be the backbone of the 100% surveillance state and cashless society. That is the big picture motive here. And that is why we see both sides, right and left, moving to quickly roll this forward. Uh, President Trump has said that the United States must win the 5G war. And so now there's a federal mandate from the top down to get this 5G stuff implemented. Just recently, President Trump emerged from a meeting with Senator Chuck Schumer and Representative Nancy Pelosi, having concluded a deal for infrastructure spending in America, <clears throat> Schumer came out of the meeting. He's an arch enemy of Trump. He hates Trump's guts, and I think probably vice versa. He came out of the meeting saying, we had a great meeting with the president. Why? He even suggested more money than we suggested for infrastructure, and he upped the ante. And so President Trump put on the table for infrastructure spending $2 trillion. Wow. Huge. Where will this go? Are they talking about bridges? Are they talking about potholes? Are they talking about repaving the freeways? No, they're not. They're talking about the infrastructure that we're talking about here to blanket our country with smart city technology and everything that goes to shore it up for the largest social engineering project in the history of the world. Now, some of you may be interested in my talk on the summit, which I believe is day three. Um, of the summit as it as it opens up, but I want to make sure that you do not miss the work of Dr. Klinghart. He lays out many solutions to this biologically impacting agenda. It is very clear that 2.4 gigahertz was used intentionally for destruction. You know, it was developed in England to uh, make masses of the population docile. With Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz. You use the 2.4 gigahertz to make population docile, but also before it was mass introduced, it was known 
that over two uh, or three generations of exposure, it would turn an entire population infertile. We is the hyperactivity, the attention deficit in children that is now the new normal. And the kids, instead of getting the advice to limit their Wi-Fi exposure and their radio wave exposure, they're put on Adderall and Ritalin and, and all the drugs. It was absolutely stunning and amazing for me. Say they have two groups of autistic children, the ones that get dramatically better and the ones that don't. The ones that are getting dramatically better are the ones that following my EMR protection to a T. And finally, just so you guys know, I have been asked to promote other summits and declined. But this one is a group of people whose knowledge and expertise will be an incredible resource for you to tap into. And so that's why I decided to be a part of this one. Other guests include people like James Corbett of The Corbett Report. Love him. 5G is not just a neutral mobile network. It is the backbone for a system of total surveillance which has been written about and worked toward for the better part of a century. The world of the technocrats, the world of the smart grid, and the world of constant real-time surveillance of everything would not be possible without the 5G network that is being installed right now. Sharon Goldberg, you may have heard her speaking before Congress. I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. Martin Paul, PhD. So let me just say the current plan, which has already been approved by the U.S. Congress and the FCC, is to put out tens of millions of these 5G antennae, irradiating every single person and every other organism in the whole country without even a single biological safety test of genuine 5G radiation. This is, in my judgment, absolutely insane. Thank you very much. Patrick Kolbeck, Ty and Charlene Bollinger, and many, many more. So again, I encourage you to use that link below to check out the talks that are available right now, which is the Patrick Wood, the RFK Jr. talk, as well as Dr. Deborah Davis has some really great information on this really important matter. So these are links that you can use to educate yourself, your families, your local community leaders. It can help you to learn how to change this in your schools, as well as your local cities, which is pretty much the last place that we have to make an impact on this. I hope it encourages you to not only figure out more about what's going on, but to go out there and do something about it. God bless you all. I love you. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.